say, Mayor Nenshi, the, the time is finally nigh when Calgarians will have a picture of what hosting the 2026 Games will entail, but how detailed, how clear is that picture going to be? Pretty detailed. Um, you know, there will be a few things that are yet to be decided, and frankly, those things will be decided later. Some of those, in fact, will be decided after we win the bid, if we choose to move forward and win the bid. So I wouldn't focus too much on that. And I think what uh, Calgarians are going to get uh, next week is a real good view of the hosting plan, of what it's going to look like, where some of the venues will be, with a couple of question marks still uh, to be determined as we move forward. They'll get a good sense of what the overall budget is. There'll be one piece of information that's missing next week, and that information will be around what the various cost shares for the different orders of government are. Uh, hopefully that'll come out relatively quickly after that, certainly well in advance of the plebiscite. So, you know, sitting in the meeting today, I was very pleased to see how much work had been done and the level of detail that we had found on most items, and I think the public will be as well. So I understand from some of your colleagues that you'll have a sense of the range of the level of support that may come from other orders of government, but is the picture in terms of what the potential costs are for Calgary any clearer? It's hard to answer that question without the numbers from the other governments. I mean, fundamentally, the governments have certain policies. So the federal government, for example, has what they call their 3550 policy in terms of what percentage they are willing to pay. Um, so that will give us a sense of where we're going with this, you know, and it, it'll really help clarify some of the concerns, I think, that some folks have had saying, well, you know, we've got this really big number for what the Olympics calls costs, and then that immediately translates to the city is paying for all of it. In fact, the cities will be paying for a very small portion of that big number. Is that small portion, you probably have a better sense of the idea that you can't talk about it, but that small portion, is this affordable at Calgary Wings bid? Oh yeah, absolutely. If we are not able to make a deal that makes sure that it's affordable for Calgary and fits Calgary's existing capital priorities, then we stop. Uh, you know, because, so I'll answer the question in reverse. If we come up with a deal that we can't afford, then why would we do it? I would be the first one to say, we're going to have that in the bed. So based on the numbers you're hearing, this I'm is doable. Good. Yeah, absolutely doable. Absolutely doable in terms of things that we need to build, things that are our priorities in any case. Speaking of stopping, how do you feel about the possibility of an offer at that on your Tuesday? I said to committee today that Based on what I learned today, I am very comfortable with going to the people with this plebiscite, and I suspect Council feels that way as well. You also spoke uh, during the meeting a little bit about what happens past the plebiscite. If Calgary endorses a bid, uh, will there be any further bids at Calgary, or sorry, votes at Council about this? Well, there'll, have there one, be... there'll have to be one. There'll have to be one right after the plebiscite. Will there be? Because will there remember, need it's non-binding. I think that we, at that point, if we move forward on the plebiscite and the plebiscite passes successfully, then uh, I wouldn't use the terminology of off-ramps anymore because I think at that point, council would be duty-bound to do what the public asked us to do, which is put forward the best possible bid. Uh, that said, I reserve the right. Uh, if it looks like it's not affordable, if it looks like it's going to be bad for future generations of Calgarians to come back to council and say, guys, we got to stop. But that's a sort of a negative option building, if you like, uh, in terms of once, if the plebiscite endorses it, then I think we've got to put our best foot forward and not be going back to council and saying, well, do you agree with this or do you agree with that, but actually empower the bid committee to put together a great bid. What's your take on Mr. Fielding's assessment on how close the plebiscite will be? I mean, what we know more than anything uh, in Calgary and in Alberta is that election campaigns matter. And we are some 75 days out from the plebiscite, so far be it for me to actually try and figure that out. Uh, I will say that the most interesting thing that I hear from citizens is, I'm in favor of it, but everyone else seems to be opposed to it. So I always ask, well, are your neighbors, are your family, are your friends opposed to it? No, no, but everyone else seems to be. So it's really interesting, right, because the pro side uh, has been very quiet, and the city has been very quiet, because as I've said from the very beginning, I'm not so much pro the Olympics as I am pro a great deal for Calgarians. And until we have that deal to present, you know, that vacuum has really been filled by the no side. Uh, and so it's interesting that people are like, they haven't convinced me, but I feel like they've convinced everyone else. But certainly the, the little bit of polling we've done shows that not to be true. Is there a magic number in the plebiscite to be comfortable? 
Oh, that is a hard question. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, Are you happy you know, with 51? Well, you, you know, know? the plebiscite is non-binding, right? And certainly, if it's 50% plus one vote, then I would imagine most members of council will say, well, this is what the public wants. Um, that said, if it's 50% plus one vote, then it's really important, even if we choose to move forward, to really listen to what some of the concerns were and make sure we're addressing those.